Hello and welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about how to create one-to-one -one video call using Zigo Cloud. So this is a platform that offers lots of services. If we go to zigocloud.com, under products, we can see that we have video call, voice call, live streaming, in-app chat, and other products. So this is a great resource if you want to build such apps with lots of functionalities. On top of that, it has a UI kit. So here we have UI kit, which means that with just a couple of lines of code, you get all the features available in your application. You don't have to create all the different elements in your application. So today we are going to create a one-on-one -on -one video call, something like a Zoom call that you have with one other person. Now to use this platform, we need to sign up. So we are going to go to sign up and in here you can write and fill the form and you can start your free trial because in the free trial they are going to give you 10,000 free minutes and you can use this to develop your applications. So after signing up you are going to have an account. So you can log in to your account and here is the dashboard. So in the dashboard you can see that you have 10,000 minutes for your free trial. If you want to use more minutes, you need to top up your balance and you can continue working and building your application. So for today, we are going to focus on the video call, one-to-one -one video call that is based on Flutter. One of the languages that they support is Flutter, so it's very easy to set up your app and code your app. So this is the basic video call. In this documentation, you can see all the necessary details for your application. For example, the implementation process, how it's going to work. For example, the first one, the first stage is to create the engine and then the user is going to log into the room and the same for user B. So when user A and B, they are in the same room, they can connect with each other and they can start a call. So here we can see more detailed call sequence in the background. Then we start the coding by implementing the different parts of Flutter applications. So this is a good documentation that shows you all the necessary elements and features and you can code based on these documentations. It has good examples as well. So let's start with a new Flutter application in Android Studio. I have created a new Flutter application. First, we need to import our dependencies. So in pubspec.yaml, we need to have the Zigo Express engine and we need to have permission handler because when we need to make a call or receive a call, we need to use microphone and camera and we are going to need the permission for that. Then we can start with main.dart. In the main.dart, we first have the initialization for the Zigo cloud engine. So we have Zigo Express engine dot create engine with profile. So here we are going to set up our Zigo cloud and actually connecting this application to our profile and our account. So how do we connect it using app ID and app sign? So let's go back to our dashboard. Inside this dashboard, to create a project, we click on create your project. Then we are going to select which service you are going to create. So you can see there are lots of services to choose. So we are going to select the video call. We click on next and we name our project. Then it's going to ask how we want to get started. We want to get started using UI kits or the SDK. Remember that UI kits is the pre-built SDK. So when you create a call, 
it's going to have all the elements that are needed in a video call. But for the SDK, you need to build your widgets and your customization from the scratch. So we are going to select UI kit and we are going to select the flutter. Then we click on start with UI kits. Now the project is created. Then here we are going to select for flutter and then we select start to integrate. In this page, you can see your app ID and app sign. These are your specific details for your profile and your account. And you should not share these with others. So these are confidential. And we are going to use these in our Flutter application. So we copy these app ID and app sign and we go to Android Studio. Now here we can create a new file called constant.dart. Inside the constant.dart, we are going to create app ID and app sign ID. Then we need to paste the values that we got from our dashboard. Just remember that app ID needs to be an integer. So it doesn't need to have the quotation or double quotation. It needs to be a number. This is where we keep our app ID and sign ID. Let's go to main.dart. So as we mentioned, we start by linking the application to our profile using create engine with profile. We provide the app ID and we provide the app sign. Next is the normal Flutter application and coding. I just added this debug show checked mode banner to false. So we wouldn't have the banner on the corner of our application. As you can see, the home is set to home page. So we are going to create another file called homepage.dart. Inside homepage.dart, you are going to show the first page of our application, which is going to be the page that user comes in and is going to ask the user for room ID and username. So we need to have text edit controller for room ID and name. Then inside our init state, we need to check for permission. Remember that we installed permission handler package in our pubspec.yaml file. So here we have a function, check permission. So in check permission, we need to have the permission for camera and microphone. So based on if the permission is granted or not, it's going to handle the permission. And this is going to work for Android and iOS. After the init state, we are going to have the validation and navigation. So first, we need to make sure that, that the text for room ID is not empty. And also the name, which is the username, is also not empty. Then we are going to push the user. We are going to use the navigator.push to push the user to the next page, which is going to be the call page where we need to make the actual call. So here we are going to send the username and we are going to send the room ID. Next, we have the build function. In the build function, we have a scaffold and an app bar. Then we have a column. Inside the column, we have the text field for room ID and the text field for username. Then we have two buttons. One is to join meeting using the information provided by the user. And another one is to create meeting. So we can create the meeting for future. So to show how this looks like, let's run the application. So here I have an Android emulator and we are going to run this on the emulator. So as you can see, we are asked for permission for the video, which is the camera, and for the audio, which is for microphone. 
Then we have to enter the room ID and the name or username. Then we need to click on join meeting or we can create a meeting using this button. So when we click on this join meeting, we are going to be directed or navigated to another page, which is call page. So we create another Dart file, which is the call page.dart. Inside this file, the actual call and the meeting happens. So at the start, we have the local view and remote view widget because it's going to be two streams. One is our own camera stream and the other widget or small window is going to be the other person's stream or video. So we need two widgets at the start. Then we need local view ID and remote view ID and then room ID. So the first function here is to get the room ID. If we create the second button, which is create meeting, we, we come here and we create a meeting, which is going to be a random number. And that is going to be assigned to the room. Otherwise, if we know the room ID, we just return widget.room ID. The next function is get user ID. So this is the same for user ID. When the user knows the ID, it's going to be the specific user ID. Otherwise, it's going to be generated randomly. So the next function is start lesson event. So this is going to be the function that the user is going to be listening for the incoming call. So first we have Zigo Express Engine dot on room user update. So this one is going to be receiving the call back when there is another user coming to the room. Or we can have Zigo Express Engine dot on room stream update, which is going to be the callback for updates on the status of the stream in the room. So in both we just put a little debug print to print for the debugging purposes. Then we have an if statement to check if there is an update on the stream in the room. The next function is start play stream. In this function, we are going to start to play the stream and we are going to render or get the stream from the remote user. So in here we have the Zigo Express Engine dot instance dot create canvas view. So inside the canvas view we are going to have the view ID which is the remote view ID of the user and then we are going to stream it to play the video stream. In the same way we have the stop play stream which is going to stop the stream of the video from the user. Then we have the function for log in the room and log out of the room. So in log in we have the user that logs into the room. So we have user ID, you have your or user name. So we create a Zigo user that has user ID and user name. Then we get the room ID, which is going to be either randomly generated ID or the one that the user entered. Then we have the Zigo Express Engine dot instance dot login room. Based on the room ID and the user, it's going to log the user in the room. We have the function for logout room, which is going to be when the call ends and the users need to log out of the room. The next function is start preview. Start preview is going to create the canvas and we start previewing the stream. So here we have the view ID that is going to be used for the canvas view. Then we need to have the preview 
canvas and this is going to be the view id and the view mode which is the zigo view mode dot aspect fill how this is going to be presented to you, to the user then we have another function called stop preview in this one it's the opposite we are going to stop the preview of the video in the call then we have start publish and stop publish so after the login to our room we need to use this function to start publishing this stream and the stop publish is the opposite we need to stop the publishing of stream in the room when we are done with the call in the init state we have the start lesson event function and login room function where we provide the user id and we provide the name to log in to the room then in the build function we are going to have media query to have this adaptable to different page sizes so we need to have uh, two because it's one for output stream our stream and the other one is the stream for another user then we need to have elevated button which is going to be the button that users push when the call ends so to show how this works we have this emulator as one end of the call and we have another physical phone as the second end of the call so now if you check we have the emulator and the physical device so in the emulator we are going to set the room id as one and the name as user one then we are going to click on join meeting now we are inside the call and we are waiting to the other person so this is how it looks like on the emulator because there is no physical camera so let's go to our physical device here we have the same room id which should be the same and we have the name which is username then we click on join meeting now as you can see we are now connected so this is the physical phone and you can see that the camera is having the outside stream so it's going to stream to the other user and on the small window we can see the camera for the emulator now let's go to emulator it's the opposite we have the camera on the larger window and on the smaller one we have the incoming stream from the physical device and after the call we can click on this red button to end the call so that's how you create a one-to-one -one video call using the zigo cloud platform i hope this was helpful thanks for watching i will see you in the next video